Well guys, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This delivery report was not good at all. If you want somebody to tell you everything is fine, this is a delivery record and we're gonna moon in 2023, I'm probably not the guy for you. You should probably go to the Tesla fanboy channels then, because I'm gonna give you the real cold true implications of this delivery report going forward. And by the end of the video, I'm gonna estimate Q4 earnings and I'm gonna tell you if they're gonna come in line, if they're gonna disappoint, and if they do, to which degree. The first thing you have to understand is that in 2014, Tesla set a goal of hitting half a million cars to be delivered in 2020, which against all odds, they actually met. And then after that, they set up a new ambitious goal from January 21st Tesla guidance. Over a multi-year horizon, we expect to do 50% average annual growth in vehicle deliveries. In some years, we might even grow faster. And this is the standard for which Tesla gets judged today. If you come above this 50% magical line, the stock tends to do well, but if you come below, the stock tends to do badly. In 2021, they grew deliveries 87% and the stock did fairly, fairly well. It actually doubled. But this year, as of today, they did a 40% growth, which is pretty good for most companies, but for Tesla, it goes below their magical 50% line. And that's one of the reasons why the stock did badly this year is because analysts thought they would come below the magical line. So this magical line is very, very important for Tesla. Wall Street consensus for this quarter was between 420,000 and 427, depending on who you ask. So as you can clearly see, they missed badly. And you might be thinking like, yeah, but that's Wall Street estimates. What about all the Twitter bulls that typically are very good at estimating deliveries and production? Well, even those guys who typically do a very good job, they miss the mark completely. But the most important part is the difference between production and delivery, which came in at 34,000 cars. This is a huge increase in inventories, and this is gonna have a crazy impact in cash flow for this Q4 earnings report that we're gonna have in two weeks. But the real question is still, why did they miss so badly? And what are the implications for Q4 earnings? Well, the real reason they missed once again was China. We know inventories in the US and Europe were pretty much non-existent by the end of Q4. So this mess was pretty much entirely made up of China not taking enough deliveries by the end of the quarter, which caused a situation in which we ended up with 34,000 cars in boats coming from China. Tesla will claim they're transitioning to a smoother regional mix of cars, which led to more cars in transit. But at its core, this is a demand problem in China. Now, how are earnings being impacted then well these were my estimates earlier this quarter but now i have to obviously change the new delivery number after that i need to draw the gross margins because there was heavy discounting going in the us and in china to move inventory at the end of the quarter so margins have to drop a little bit because of that so at the end of the day i end up with one billion dollar difference in net profit as opposed to what i had before obviously not good now there's more than one billion dollars in deferred revenue for fsd which could come and save the day but the thing is, this revenue is not affecting cash flow and it could get discounted as a one-time item. So it might not be enough to save us from this delivery report. Another very real possibility is that all of this has been already discounted and the stock actually rallies tomorrow. And this could very well happen because a lot of these funds, they have information that we don't have or we don't have until later. So it could be the case that they already anticipated this, sold the stock, and now they're buying back tomorrow or in a week from now, that could happen. But at this point, that's wishful thinking. This is not a real possibility that I'm thinking of. It seems to make sense that at this price point, the leverage have picked, at least in China. So we need to actually move the demand curve lower and increase the total addressable market. I think Elon obviously knew this was going to happen. And that's why I think he started preparing us for a change of strategy in 2023. Hence, the comments on December 22nd make even more sense today. With this change of strategy, the demand problem gets solved real quick, but it comes with a huge cost to the investor class. Now, if you want to learn more about this possible change of strategy going into 2023, you should check out this video right here. I break everything down, Elon's comments, what they imply and how we're going to go forward into this year and how we're going to lower cost so we can sell more cars and we could essentially keep growing units. And as a Tesla investor, you don't want to be in the dark about this strategy. This is going to fundamentally change the demand curve for Tesla going forward. In any case, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.